Today we're going to check out a firmware feature in Marlin called Host Action Commands. Hello everybody, Chris here, and this video is kind of a continuation from last week's video. We had to get this filament sensor hooked up so I could show you how Host Action Commands work. And this is one of the better scenarios currently for that firmware feature. What it is, is the missing gap from using Octoprint or a host that streams firmware to your 3D printer. We could never talk back to that host and tell it what to do if we needed to intervene somehow, like on filament changes during filament runout. And I'm pretty excited about this feature because there could be a lot of possibilities here that we could tackle these different problems using one of these streaming hosts in the future. So let's jump into it. I'll show you how I found out about this feature. And like it or not, Octoprint, they put out a lot of different alerts when you open up the page. They give you a lot of information about what's going on, and that can be good or bad, but in this case, it was really good, because that's exactly how I found out about it. So I started looking into this whole thing when I saw this informational message in Octoprint the other day. Now, this is a newer version. It's 1.7.2. And I am running this printer on a newer version of Marlin. It is 2.0.93. But basically, this is saying that the firmware on this printer supports action commands, but they're disabled. And action commands, that will allow the printer to talk back to Octoprint about things that are happening, like pause, cancellation, filament runouts. So, of course, I wanted to learn more. So, it looks like this feature was implemented in Octoprint back in October of 21. There's a lot of good information on it here, but it pretty much has to do with Marlin and the host actions command and configuration underscore adv.h. And of course, there's also more information available on that, but it pretty much just gave you the options that were in configuration underscore adv.h. So that was my next stop. Headed over to VS Code, search for host action commands, and I find this line. There's even a link up here to reprap.org it's going to give you even more information. So your firmware or G code can insert any of these commands in the stream so that Octoprint will know what the printer's doing. And depending on what you're trying to do, this could be pretty powerful. So I'm very interested to try it out. So the first step to take would be just to uncomment this line. And that's going to enable all of these features. So to start checking them out, I'm just going to recompile and upload it to my printer. And just a side tip, if you're using the Marlin extension for VS Code to do your builds, your compiles, this was a tip that somebody gave me in the comments. You don't have to go back to Explorer to get your bin file to load to your printer. You can just click on it right here. That will bring it up, highlight it in the Explorer, you can copy it to your SD card, and go ahead and load it on your printer. I thought that was a fun added tip, Thanks a lot for whoever gave me that in the comments. After you've loaded the new firmware that we compiled, you can connect back up, and now that informational message is gone. If you head over to the terminal, you can scroll back to when the printer first connected. You can see host action commands set to one. Now we should be able to go ahead and use this feature. So as far as setup goes, that's all that's needed to start using host action commands in the newer versions of Octoprint and the newest version of Marlin. Now, I couldn't come up with a lot of different scenarios how we would use these commands as of yet. I couldn't think of a lot of them that would be useful to you right away, but this filament runout definitely would be. So that's the example we're going to use going forward. Now, just having this feature set enabled gives us a lot of possibilities here. There's not even a lot of plugins that utilize it yet, but I can totally see where that's going to start being a common thing, because this could be really useful. But first, let's just go ahead and test filament runout. Let's fire off a print via Octoprint. So our print's off and running. Let's let it get a couple of layers, and then we'll trigger that filament sensor. All right, we're a couple layers in. Let's go ahead and clip that filament, and we'll let it cycle past the extruder so that filament sensor will trigger. This one should trigger if it hasn't sensed filament movement within seven millimeters. Okay, the sensor triggered. We have gone to the park location. It is currently trying to eject the filament, but let's jump back to Octoprint. You can see we have a message from the printer. And I know some of you might not be as excited about this as I am, but this could be really big. This is a lot of the drawback that we had from Octoprint for a long time. 
we didn't get a lot of dialogue back from the machine on what it was doing. Okay, so it's already tried to back out the filament and it's parked the nozzle. Next, it's going to try to pull new filament in and purge it, but it's important to talk about how this process works, the M600 in Marlin. Now, if we hit the button and we load the filament correctly, we just got heater timeout because it spins the hot end down after a certain amount of time, but we can fix that. But if we hit this reheat, put the filament in, and we trigger the filament sensor, and we push seven millimeters of filament, that's because this sensor, it needs seven millimeters so it knows it's re-engaged. We have to push some filament so that it knows it's back, the filament is back, and the sensor is still there. Then we will get a continue or purge more. So let's go ahead and reheat. Now it's waiting for us to insert filament. So we can go ahead and hit continue. And during the purge sequence, the amount that's set in the firmware, that's how much time you have to get this filament reloaded and back to the sensor. So I'm gonna to try to feed some in. And as long as you got it in, in that amount of feed that you have set in the firmware, you've purged seven millimeters, you should be okay. You can see from Octoprint, you can either purge more or continue. And you can see on the LCD screen, that matches the badging that we saw in Octoprint, purge or continue. But what happens if we don't get that filament sensor loaded correctly during that amount of purge time? So let's go ahead and continue, and then we'll cut the filament again. By the way, you can use either in this process. If you have a screen or Octoprint, they will work side by side. If you click one button or click the other on the screen or Octoprint, it doesn't really matter. Let's let, let's let it print and then we'll cut that filament again. This time we're just going to continue, but we're not going to load any filament. We didn't load any filament, but from Octoprint we get the same options. Purge more and continue. But if you take a look at the screen, your only options are purge more or kick the filament runout sensor off. And this was caused because that filament sensor isn't in the correct state. It still thinks it's out of filament. If you were to continue from Octoprint right now, you loaded the filament, but that sensor wasn't satisfied, you would be running with the filament runout sensor turned off for the rest of the print. So the badging on Octoprint is a little bit misleading. You just want to be aware of that. So I'm going to go ahead and load that filament back up. Filament has been loaded. That should satisfy our sensor. I'm going to hit purge more. And since the sensor is in the state that it should be, you now have continue. Hit continue, go back to the print. And if you take a look in configuration, the filament sensor is on. So that's something you need to look out for if you're gonna do a setup like this. From the terminal, you can do an M119 to see the state of our filament sensor. You can see it's triggered, so that means the filament is present. Or better yet, you can do an M412. The filament runout sensor is on, your distance is seven millimeters like we set in the config, and you'll notice this says host handling off. That means the M600 on the printer is gonna handle the actual filament transition, the loading, all of the purge, all that good stuff. Host handling on would mean you had your host, like Octoprint, do all those movements. So you just wanna make sure that you know the filament runout state when you're doing things like this. If you want to keep that filament runout sensor on no matter what, I would suggest doing something like adding a command to your resume G code. You can go to settings, G code script, and I just put it right in here M412 S1. And that would ensure if your filament sensor was off, this would always kick it back on. Just something you might want to consider. And with these host action commands on, the terminal is actually kind of interesting. Let's just cancel the print. You'll see in the terminal lines like this. This is that action command coming back from the firmware. So it sent us a notification that the bed is cooling and now the Ender 3 is ready once again. So it's ready to start another print. And you can use all of those commands, all the stuff it sends back in any of the scripting that you want to do in Octoprint. So you can only imagine the cool scenarios, the scripting that you could come up with. Another feature of this that's kind of interesting is some of these menu items. 
like host start menu item back to Octoprint. Let's say you had your file loaded. You just used your load command down here, but you didn't hit start print. Maybe you needed to go to the printer, load some filament, do something before that print started. As long as it's been loaded up here, you can go to that menu item, start host print, and that will start that print, whatever was loaded here in Octoprint. So that could be kind of handy. You can also now pause the print that's running from Octoprint if you're at your screen. So just go in here and hit pause print. It's going to park that nozzle, but it's going to send back prompts to Octoprint so you can control it. Nozzle's parked. We can continue. Do you want to purge or just continue? Well, let's go ahead and continue. And the printer continues. So the back and forth can be handy for a lot of different things. So I think there's some real potential here. And I mostly find this feature intriguing because I used to get a lot of questions about M600 filament change with people using touch screens. You can't use that touch screen to go back and forth. It's intended to use that LCD for the prompts to load the filament, purge it, all that good stuff. But this will at least get you to be able to use Octoprint if you didn't have an LCD screen at all. And I don't see why we couldn't port that over to talk to the touch screen as well. So you could get around it there too. I think there's a lot of options here. If you're an Octoprint enthusiast, or you like to program, you like to hack and tweak on things, I think it's well worth your while to come out here and look at all the different options you currently have. And I'm sure they're going to be adding more. I'm definitely going to be coming out here, checking out some of these options, adding some things to some of the start and end scripts in Octoprint, just to make my 3D printing experience more convenient. And as a final thought on this feature, I was thinking about power loss recovery. Now, that's been a big hole with Octoprint for a long time. You can't recover from a power loss if you're running from Octoprint. But let's say we had a small UPS, one that wasn't big enough to run your printer, but could run your Pi. And we could send some sort of command over to Octoprint when we sensed a power failure. It could then save our place with some sort of plug-in. Then when the power came up, we could go to Octoprint, hit resume, and save that print. I think that would be a huge advantage and a plus for Octoprint users. I know I'm going to try to look into it. There's got to be a way that we can make that happen. So hopefully you at least found this all interesting. That will be it for today, but I'll see you really soon on the next one.